Jesus went forth with his disciples across the Kidron Valley, where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place. For Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas, procuring a band of soldiers and some officers from the chief priests of the Pharisees, went there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was about to befall him, came forward and said to them, Whom do you seek? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said to them, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When he said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. Again he asked them, Whom do you seek? They said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. If you seek me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that had been spoken. I did not lose a single one of those whom you gave me. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's slave and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, put your sword into its sheath. Shall I not drink the cup for which the Father has provided me? So the band of soldiers and their captain, and the officers of the Judean authority, seized Jesus and bound him. First they led him to Annas, for he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was the high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had given counsel to the religious authorities that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. Simon, P Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. As this disciple was known to the high priest, he entered the court of the high priest along with Jesus, while Peter stood outside at the door. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out and spoke to the woman who guarded the gate and brought Peter in. After the woman who guarded the gate said to Peter, are you not also one of this man's disciples? Peter said, I am not. Now the servants and officers made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing and warming themselves. Peter also was with them, standing and warming himself. The high priest then questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. Jesus answered him, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in the synagogues and in the temple where all Jewish people come together. I have said nothing secretly. Why, why do you ask me? All those who've heard me know what I've said to them. When he had said this, one of the officers standing by struck Jesus with his hand, saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken wrongly, bear witness to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Annas then sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself, they said to him, Are you not also one of this man's disciples? And Peter denied it and said, I am not. And one of the servants of the high priest, a kinsman of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you with him in the garden? Peter again denied it, and at once the cock crowed. Then they led Jesus from the house of Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early. They themselves did not enter the headquarters so that they might not be defiled, but might eat the Passover. So Pilate went out and said to them, What accusation do you bring against this man? And they answered, 
If this man were not an evildoer, we would not have handed him over. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. The religious authorities said to him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death. This was to fulfill the word which had been spoken about the death that Jesus was to die. Pilate entered the headquarters and again called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, Do you say this of your own accord? Or did others say it to you about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, my kingship is not of this world. If my kingship were of this world, my servants would fight that I might not be handed over to the religious authorities. But my kingship is not of this world. And Pilate said to him, So you are a king. And Jesus answered him, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I have come into the world to bear witness to the truth. Everyone then who is of the truth hears my voice. <coughs> Pilate said to him, what is truth? After Pilate had said this, he went to the religious authorities again and told them, I find no crime in him, but you have a custom that I should release one man for you at the Passover. Will you have me release for you the king of the Jews? And they cried out, not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. Then Pilate took Jesus and scourged him, and the soldiers plaited a crown of thorns and put it on his head and arrayed him in a purple robe. They came up to him saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and struck him with their hands. Pilate went out again and said to them, See, I am bringing him out to you that you may know I find no crime in him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, and Pilate said to him, Behold the man! When the chief priests and officers saw him, they cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no crime in him. The religious authorities answered him, But we, we have a law, and by that law he ought to die because he has made himself the Son of God. When Pilate heard these words, he was more afraid. He entered the headquarters again and said to Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, Will you not speak to me? Do you not know that I have the power to release you and the power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, you would have no power over me unless it had been given to you from above. Therefore, the one who delivered me to you has the greater sin. Upon this, Pilate sought to release him. But the religious authorities cried out, If you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. Everyone then who makes himself a king sets himself against Caesar. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out, sat down on the judgment seat at a place called the pavement, in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now, it was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about the sixth hour. He said to the religious authorities, Behold your king! They cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! And Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? And the chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. They handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and went out, bearing his own cross, to a place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him with two others on either side, 
and Jesus between them. Pilate also wrote a title and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Many of the Judeans read this title, for it was a place where Jesus was crucified near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. The Jewish chief priest said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews. But this man said, I am the king of the Jews, Pilate answered. What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and made four parts, one for each soldier and also his tunic, but the tunic was without seam, woven from top to bottom. So they said to one another, let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it will be. This was to fulfill the scripture. They parted my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldiers did this, by standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing near, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. So after Jesus, knowing that it was now finished, said, I thirst, a bowl full of vinegar stood there. So they put a sponge full of vinegar on hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, in order to prevent the bodies from remaining on the cross on the Sabbath day. The religious authorities asked Pilate that their legs be broken and that they might be taken away. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear and at once came out blood and water. After this, Joseph of Arimathea was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly, for fear of the religious authorities, asked Pilate that he might take away the body. So Pilate gave him leave. And so he came and took away his body. Nicodemus also, the one who had at first come to Jesus by night, came bringing a mixture of aloe and myrrh. They took the body of Jesus and bound it in linen cloths with spices, as is the burial custom of the Jews. Now in this place there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb that no one had ever been laid. So because it was the Jewish day of preparation, as the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus there. Go in peace. May Jesus Christ, who for our sake became obedient unto death, even death on a cross, keep you and strengthen you this night and forever. Amen. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Oh, 
sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they nailed him to the cross? Were you there when they nailed him to the cross? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they nailed him to the cross? Were you there when they pierced him in the side? Were you there when they pierced him in the side? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they pierced him in the side? Were you there when the sun refused to shine? Were you there when the sun refused to shine? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble. Tremble. Were you there when the sun refused to shine? Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Oh. Sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they 